Okay, what's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Sunday edition of Morning Scone presented by Brock Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Glad to have you aboard with us here, as always. And of course, uh, if you need roof, if you have roof issues, you can always give us a shout 364 1007. 364 1007. Restored Motions, restoredmotions.com and ProCharGV, ProCharGV.com. All right, y'all. Hope you had a uh, really great Saturday. Sunday's off to a good start. Um, Drew is, pr- I can hear him talking in his bed. So I'm probably going to have to get up in a minute to go get him out of bed because when he hears me talking, he's going to want to come join the party, at least for a millisecond. Anyway, um, got a lot to talk about. Um, Kim Mulkey derangement syndrome is just wild. We'll get to that. The LSU gymnastics team won the SEC title last night, which was great to watch. Had uh, split screens going, had the baseball game on the TV and the gymnastics meet on my on my tablet. But um, we'll start with baseball. LSU loses game two to Florida in 11 innings. And, man, this is just really a disappointing one. Um, not much way around it. You were up 4-2 to two in the eighth, and um, you allowed single runs in the eighth and the ninth to let them tie it, and then they won it in 11 on a two-run homer by Jack Heglione. So the one guy you don't want to let beat you, beat you. And what stings even more is, you know, the run that got home in the eighth, Nate Ackenhausen struck out the hitter. Uh, he spiked a breaking ball, hit Malazzo in the chest plate, right, the chest protector, and kicked right. And it just got too far away. And the run from third scored, and the runner was safe at first. So that's how it got to be four to three. And then in the ninth, Ackenhausen walked the leadoff batter, but it was a 2-2 count. Uh, he threw up a pitch which he thought was strike three. I mean, he started like circling the mound and said they called it a ball. So it was 3-2 count. He came back and overthrew a pitch that was way too high. He ends up walking the leadoff guy who comes around to score. So, man, massively disappointing because uh, that's one that got away. There's just, I mean, you're up 4-2 at home in the eighth. You got to close the door. Um, But, I mean, I know some of y'all hate to hear it, but it's baseball. I mean, you got to get all 27 outs. And, um, you know, when you look big picture at it, um, the really disappointing part is, like we always say, man, they all count the same. And, um you know, a win last night would have given you an opportunity to go for a sweep today and put you at potentially four and two through two weeks, which is exactly where you want to pace. You forget about last week's series loss. Well, now Caglione's going to pitch for Florida today, and this was probably their best opportunity. Sunday was probably Florida's best opportunity to get a win in this series, but they stole one from you yesterday, and now they can win the series if they go out with Caglione today and he has a good day and beat you, but like LSU saw Caglione in in, uh, in Omaha last year, they roughed him up in that championship game. It's interesting; it's a rematch of the of the final game, uh, Heard against Caglione, and uh, Heard got the best of him that day in Omaha. You know, and let's see if now on a on a home field, uh, you have a repeat performance. Um, gosh, it's just so disappointing. I mean, you had you out hit him. I mean, it was I think ten five when it went into extras. It, it the hits ended up eleven to eight. LSU out hit Florida eleven to eight. Uh, you hit four home runs in the game. Um, no, three. Bingham, Travinsky, Jones, Homer, the trade three. Um, excuse me, wait. Um, so anyway, oh, uh, sorry, I was looking true. Um, and then it was nice to gauge jump, have a great bounce back. I mean, w- that maybe the most encouraging thing from this weekend so far with uh, Pullman and, and jump has been they've looked more this weekend against a really good Florida offense like they did the first month of the season and not like they did last week against Mississippi State, which kind of continues to illustrate the point that the Mississippi State series continues to sort of be the outlier, right? Um, Jump went five and two-thirds, two runs on two hits, 
uh, struck out eight, walked four. And again, three of the walks, he walked the bases loaded. Florida got a two spot in the fourth. Jump walked the bases loaded. Um, and it was crazy because he walked the bases loaded, but kept the kind of kept it on the tracks, came out and was perfect in the fifth and uh, got two outs in the sixth before they, they brought in Gidry, who got a strikeout to end the sixth. But anyway, really disappointing loss. So, okay, we'll say some good mornings here. I also want to make sure we get to uh, the Kim Mulkey stuff, which I'm sure plenty of you want to talk about, and um, talk about LSU Gym, which won the uh, the SC Championship. Hey, babe, you going to go lay back down? All right, uh, Brand Roman, Scone. That series was ours for the taking. Do we chalk it up to that's baseball and tip your cap to Florida? Um, I mean, sure. I mean, Caglione hitting the homer in the 11th and Florida not giving up, yes. Um, but very, very disappointing. Um, the, you know, to, to lose it the way you did and allow those runs in the 8th and the ninth. I mean, that one felt more like you weren't outplayed, you let it get away, and then they obviously had Neely and Slater set to go in extras, and you stuck with Ackenhausen, and, and Neely got them through the ninth, and Slater got them through the 10th and the 11th. So they were better in extras, but you let it get away. Adam Parker, good morning. Deborah Cowart, Wendell Norman, Nick Newbill, what's up? Ru Russell Doloff. Devin Kelly, tough loss. They look much improved from last week. Difference being at home, man. Jesse Brown, good luck to the women's basketball team today. Yeah, man. Uh, the women will play Middle Tennessee today with uh, Triple and Sweet 16 on the line. Um, um, that game is at 2 o'clock, and it's on ABC, so... Uh, actually, the Pelicans and the uh, and the Pistons play at two o'clock as well today. So the baseball team, baseball's at noon today, right? Uh, I think baseball's. At, let me make sure I got that right. No, baseball's. Oh my God, baseball's at two. So baseball's at two. Women's basketball's at two. The Pelicans are at two. All three play at two o'clock today. Oh my God, It'll be a busy day. Um. Uh, let's see, Craig Duga. Are we firing Jay Johnson yet or not? No, nah, I think we're good. Uh, Samuel Smith, <laughs> Anthony Googly, who's a lives for these kinds of mornings. Well done. Well done. <laughs> so for those that don't know, Anthony is our resident uh, negative fan who uh, Nary has a good thing to say when things go well and is sure to pounce when things go wrong. Uh, he's what was a Randy Quaid in the outfield of uh, in Major League Two, just yelling that the team stinks the whole game. That's Anthony. Uh, Tommy, morning, Matt. When in the world did sports media world decided to light their torches and come after Kim Mulkey? Yeah, man, it's a weird thing, um, but it's a very obvious thing. Like, and I'll say, I'll say this, and I don't think many people will for fear of being canceled. Um, Kim Mulkey is an unapologetic, outspoken, conservative, white, heterosexual woman in a world dominated largely by uh, uh, liberal gay women. Um, and to be very clear, I don't care. My premise in life is the golden rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. You treat people good, I'm going to be good with you generally. Uh, all the other stuff, that's between, that's between you and you and your maker. So just be a good person. Um, but when Kim Mulkey it has the big personality, the Southern drawl, the flashy outfits, um, she didn't stand publicly with Brittany Griner when all this stuff was going on. I don't think she ever commented publicly about the Brittany Griner situation. Um, the, like, there's a lot of people in that community that took aim at Kim. And it was just another in a long series of things that they don't like about her. Um, but the Kim Mulkey derangement syndrome is just weird. It's just a weird thing. Like the, the these people who have made these uh, these widespread conclusions over Kim Mul about Kim Mulkey, like these things, like someone, like I was my, my my Twitter got flooded last night with all of it, and it's like, I mean, 
they're like she's a, she's shown she's a bad person I'm like a bad person like she's a great mom she's a great grandmother every interaction i've ever had with her has been positive it's not to say i've agreed with everything she's done um there have been times where i've had to criticize her uh you know one of the things that i criticized her for was her unwillingness to make any type of comment on the the naming of the court after sue gunner i mean it's just whatever it, it the it's it's just it it's just like they need a target and um and she's allowed one and so they fired away now as far as the washington post reporter his name is um uh kent something or other um nobody you've ever heard of but he's the guy he um a couple of years ago, wrote a piece in the Washington Post titled, In Baton Rouge, there's a $100 million football coach and everyone else. So basically, he's, I'll, I'll summarize. Kent Babb is his name. I'll summarize. So Kent Babb, who's a South Carolina grad, by the way, uh, wrote a piece in the Washington Post two years ago that said, uh, Baton Rouge has their priorities out of order. They're paying a coach $100 million and their city has all these problems. Okay, great. Uh, it's kind of like your crazy uncle, you know? Yeah, I have a crazy uncle, but that's my uncle. And if you, I can call him crazy. But if you call him crazy, we're going to fight. That's still my family. And that's what it's, uh, that guy writing that piece is like. Like, does Baton Rouge have problems? Absolutely, Baton Rouge has problems. Our state has problems. We all know it. But don't you talk bad about my state or my city. Um, and you may think that's flawed thinking. Maybe it is. I don't know. But it's it's a family. It's a familial dynamic. Um, anyway. So Kim Mulkey's refused to do an interview with this guy for two years. And so he's basically just been digging dirt, as I understand. He's calling former coaches and players, trying to get people to talk bad about her. And he's trying to put a piece together. So um, some of the things I've heard are just laughable. Um, uh, and, why, and why would it take you two years to come up with this? Give me a break. I mean, what a loser. There's just a, there's just a giant, um, um, it, it, it's just, it's just very obviously, um, they just very obviously made her a target and there's, there's an agenda there, um, which do, just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so good for Kim Mulkey, stand up for herself and we'll see what they do. I mean, it, it's one, it, this feel, it has the feel of, um, it went, th I think it was Thamel who was at, um, I can't remember if he was at SI or at Yahoo at the time, you lose track of all of them, but. Thamel wrote some big like expose on LSU football years ago that was supposed to be this bombshell. It was less miles, you remember, dating back to his time at Oklahoma State. And like you you sifted through it. It was nothing but but hearsay and speculation. And there just wasn't a lot of meat on the bone and nothing ever came of it. It was like a six part or four part series or something. It was just I mean, this has been more than 10 years now, but it was just laughable. It was just just there just wasn't a lot of journalistic standards there. And it feels like this is going to be the same thing. Um, all right. Wendell Norman, what's going on? Samuel Smith really feels like Mulkey is a conservative. Anything people will spin it for the worse. I mean, that's look, Kim spoke out a bit against, you know, during COVID she was outspoken about, not want to wear masks and all that stuff. So naturally, the that heavy, lean, far left leaning side kind of hate the hate using those terms because it's just so stupid. By the way, like I don't care if you're far left or far right. If you're far to either side, I think you're stupid. That's just my opinion. Like life shouldn't be lived on the fringes, in the extremes. Like nobody's right a hundred percent of the time like find find a way to find more common ground like celebrate the things you have in common instead of complaining about your differences but anyway 
Yes, that's a giant part of it, no doubt. Jeff McKithen, Barry Day, good morning. Luke Landry, what's going on? Uh, a conservative person, don't say I wish you would pick on Angel Reese. Right, right, right. Um, Brand Roban, we got to get the dub today. Things could unravel quickly with Arkansas, Vandy, and Tennessee coming up if LSU goes 0 5 the first five series. Yeah, Brand, kind of talked about that last week, man. I mean, you could look up and, you know, after, I mean, that won't happen, but you could look up, you know, ha at the halfway point of the, of the league and be six and nine or five and 10 in the conference. And then you've just dug yourself a giant hole. I mean, yes, you can get out of it and you can get yourself to be a you know regional host, that sort of thing again, but the national seed would slip away if that were the case. So yeah, it's important, man. It's important to win your home series. And, you know, we we knew the opportunity to to pile wins would be in the second half of the league schedule because it was going to be tough in the first half. But um yeah, man. Um Luke said kind of wish we'd used another reliever. Being that we only use three and two games, I guess we could say we're deep into their bullpen. That's not the case. Them does. Um, Luke, I I kind of disagree because I mean you were going to win the series, and <clears throat> you know you had a lead, you know, in the eighth and the ninth, um, and you felt Ackenhausen was your best guy. We've obviously seen him extend, and he's been in tough spots like he was in Omaha last year against Tennessee, and um, I had no problem sticking with with Ackenhausen there. Um, and yeah, I mean it's all hands on deck today to try to get get game three. But really, the offense will have to get going. I mean, you 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 banged out eleven hits yesterday, which is good. The four runs is not. So, um, you know, you'd love for some of those homers to have come with with guys on base. You know, that's that was really your issue yesterday. Need some moon shots, but they were solo shots. So. Uh, Larry Garner, good morning. Daryl Fonda, would you have walked the guy in the ninth, keep the force, and take your chance with with Caglione? I had no problem with it. Look, and they, um, um, uh, it was at the eleventh. It was the tenth where um, where Milo made the play on. Uh, excuse me, on um, on the on the grounder. That was in the tenth. Hang on, let me go. I'm going to go through the ninth again. They walked the leadoff guy in the ninth. I know and it was a, a bummer because Akinasen thought he had a strikeout. I did too, quite honestly. And then he walked him on the next play. Um, here it is. Sorry. So Wilson walked, then Russell flew out. Shelton grounded out the third. She had a runner on second with two outs. Um <clears throat> Oh, it was the single. I see what you're saying. Would you have walked Evans to to create a force out for Caglione? No. <laughs> no. I'll take my chance with Evans instead of Caglione. I mean, as you saw in the 11th, I mean, Caglione beat you. So, no, I would not have pitched to Caglione with runners on base up a run. Um, Kelly Gross, good morning. Bart St. Germain, good morning. Uh, Joseph Lee, good morning. Bubba Smith, Brett DeGroe, Tiger Diver. Can baseball get it done today? Sure, man. Look, Thatcher Hurd is plenty good enough. Thatcher Hurd was actually your best pitcher last week in Starkville. Um, it was unfortunate that he gave up the homer to um, to Dakota in the uh, in the Sunday game, but. I mean, it wasn't a bad pitch. We talked about it last week. I mean, the home run was, uh, I mean, Thatcher Hurt threw a breaking ball that that kid hit six inches off the ground, and that kid hit it 416 to center field. I mean, that's why he's going to be a first-round draft pick. So, I mean, that's like the, the Warren Morris homer. I think about that all the time. If you go look at the the home run that Warren Morris hit off of Tommy, um, off of Tommy Morrison, in 96, it was a phenomenal pitch. I mean, Tommy Morrison did nothing wrong in that situation. I mean, he he threw a – he did not hang a breaking ball. I mean, he threw a heck of a, of a curveball, and Morris went down and got it off his shoe tops and golfed it to right field. I mean, um, 
Anyway, so the point is, I think Hurd could be fine. We'll, we'll be fine today. Rick Manuel, um, what's your take on last week's spring football practice, same position group show improvement? I, I didn't get to go, Rick. Um, I mean, I drive Drew to school in the morning, so I, they've had morning availability at like 7.30 in the morning or 7.50 in the morning, so I haven't been able to go. Murder Giraffe, good morning. Um, okay, yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, go Tigers. Like, let's let's be clear here, man. Um, it's it's morning scone. So, um, okay, yeah, man. We're going to delete your comments. Not blo blocking or anything, just deleting your comments. It's morning scone. So, morning scone, family-friendly, family-oriented. This isn't whiskey and wine. Uh, families watch this in the morning. And getting ready for church or whatever it may be, having their breakfast. So we're going to avoid, uh, you know, the the descriptive language and the innuendo. Uh, Zachary Junda, Pat Forty, tweeting that he was hearing buzz about the Washington Post story at halftime of the Rice game felt intentional. Of course it was. And Pat Forty's the worst. He's uh, and it's so sad because I used to really admire Pat Forty. I used to love his writing. Um, you know, when I was in college, I used to read the 40-yard dash all the time because uh, it's a, it was a super creative piece of literature that I enjoyed reading every week during football season. Um, I liked Pat's uh, literary voice. Um, but he is just incorrigible. Like, uh, I, I mean... I'm fine with a columnist giving opinions. That's your job. That's that's my job. But I want your opinions to be rooted in some form of fact, integrity, and um, coming from a place that I don't feel like is swayed by your own personal bias. And that's what I feel like you get with 40. That's what you get. You're getting with this guy from the Washington Post. Um, like, it's clear that your attacks are rooted in something personal, something beyond the field or the court. Like that's the problem with Pat Forty. That's the problem with this guy writing this piece on Kim Mulkey. It it doesn't feel legitimate. Like if if you had uncovered some some like the Will Wade story, like him being on the wiretap. Okay, like. That is a newsworthy story. You had a a power five basketball coach whose voice was on a federal wiretap talking about paying a player. Like, yes, that's newsworthy, and I get it. The problem is when LSU went and its fans collectively defended Will Wade and started attacking Pat Forty, same thing with, uh, with Dick Vitale. They took those attacks personally. And so then they sharpen their knives, and then it was like, I'm going to dig you every chance I get, and they've never let up. And that's that's the sad part. Like, it's gone way – like, you would expect the journalist to have more integrity and not to stoop to the level that Pat Forty and a lot of them have. But that's what Pat Forty that, – that's why he's terrible. It's – I don't respect him one iota professionally, and I, that says more about who you are personally as well, so – uh, Barry Day, who starts in the O line for the Saints? Yeah, to be determined, man. Um, you know, with Pete gone, I mean, I, your right side, I mean, you'll, I mean, you'll have McCoy at center, right? You'll have Ruiz and Ramchick on your right side. Excuse me. The left side, I think, is a big question. Um, and I think it is, it is the big question. Um, Hurst took a pay cut. Does he win a starting job? Can Penning win one of the jobs on the left side? And do you draft somebody? I think it's very much up up, up uh, in the air. Please smash the like button if you would. Uh, subscribe up to the channel. If you're on Facebook, like the Matt Moscona page, share the post. We appreciate you for being there. Irfan Sayah, Damon Gilmore, what's going on? Joseph Lee, uh, she wasn't white and conservative. Everyone would love her. Majority of the country thinks like us. It's a minority of people that are on social media that are haters if she was black. Um... I, I do. Th I, I don't know that the majority of the country dislikes Kim Mulkey. It's just in the ecosystem she resides or works, um, where she's an outlier. Um, uh, 
Let's see. Hunter Broadhead, Matt, did you see that high schooler squat 900 pounds? That That's crazy. I did. And as a matter of fact, if you didn't see the video, so um, my buddy Nate Bell, who is a photographer, videographer, who strings for us sometimes, is at the meet and got video of it, and he collabed with us on Instagram. So if you haven't seen the video, you can go to the 104.5 ESPN Instagram page, and you can see it there. Yeah, there was a high schooler uh, from Salmon who squatted 900 pounds at the state meet. Uh, the, if you want to see the video, again, it's at the, the uh, 104.5 ESPN YouTube. Jordan Simpson, good morning from Shreveport. Um, uh, Zachary said, speaking of college basketball, do you think the women's game is equal to surpass the men? No, not even close. Listen, man, like, you got to listen. Last year's Final Four was a great moment for, for women's basketball. Um, the viewership, the interest, the transcendent nature of, of you know Angel Reese and the, the You Can't See Me and Caitlin Clark and all that stuff. It was, a, it was great exposure for the women's game. The men's basketball tournament the men's basketball tournament Has a let's see, CBS originally paid on this contract eleven billion dollars on the contract over fourteen years. Okay, uh, they agreed to an additional eight years for an additional eight point eight billion dollars. Okay. <clears throat> The women's tournament, the new one they just signed, right, is an eight-year, $920 million contract. That's not small. Uh, and by the way, that's not just for women's basketball. That's that's the, uh, the agreement that the NCAA signed with ESPN for all of the championships. So that includes the college world series the women's college world series like all of it right it's all all of the championships now the cornerstone of that is the women's basketball tournament but eight years 920 million the men's extension was for on the 11 billion dollar contract was an eight billion dollar extension so you're talking about nearly like 10 times the valuation of the men's tournament over the women so no the women's game in the women's tournament is not equaled or surpassed the men it's not even remotely close. Uh, we're we're only aware here because LSU is such a showstopper and a, a cornerstone of this thing. Joseph Lee, uh, I didn't see what happened in Memphis this week. Uh, Aaron Stevens, she's always been outspoken. Uh, Irfan, are we all over the defensive shifts? They hit around it several times, including the guy before Caglione hit the homer. Um, yeah, I, LSU shifted. Um, the defensive shift to the left side of the infield and uh, the Florida hitter poked one through the right side because nobody was home, which, I, I mean, I wish they would ban the shift. Uh, just functionally, I think the shift should be outlawed because when you look at, at baseball, it's not nine players on the field. There are nine defined positions. It's almost like you have to have an alignment in football, right? Like um, there are there is a legal way for 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 your formation, right? You otherwise it's an illegal an illegal formation. Um, so yes, I do believe in baseball. You should have to play your position. Um, you can shade. You can play in. You know, you play in double play depth. You shade toward a bag. I mean, all that stuff is fine. But when you're, I, but I, I I hate the shift. So, and and one of the more frustrating things in life is people is players at a high level who who can't beat the shift. I mean, if you're going to give me the entire right side of the infield and all I have to do is just like poke the ball that side and I get my base, I'm going to take my base 100 times out of 100. But the flip side of that, Irfan, is 
the reason they shift is because they have all the metrics. They know how how often this player is a pull hitter against a lefty, a righty, whatever. Like where they're, I mean, that's all the advanced metrics now. So you play you play percentages. Uh, Alexander B. Cannon, uh, that's well said, Matt. I wish more people would think like that. You know, um, Joseph Lee Media loves to elevate our differences. Look at college with groups for blacks only. It's all about. It's not all about like I don't, you're misusing the word racism, like. Anyway, I gotta hate these conversations. It's so stupid. It's just it's so stupid. Like and I don't and I don't mind clubs on college campuses for like minded people, whether it's racial or spiritual or uh geographical. I mean it, it's okay to to organize with people who are like-minded in certain things. Like, so I don't mind that on college campuses. Um, yeah, whatever. I just, it's, ugh. this is the whole thing. Like even just saying it, like it, all it does is drum up the, and I don't mean to like point anybody out, but a lot of, you know, who you are. It's like, you're, you're the people who watch CNN or Fox all day. And I don't care which one you watch. I think if you're sitting there watching those networks all day, you're dumb. Like, you know, like, what are you, all you're doing is, is seeking affirmation, people telling you the things you want to hear and just making you angry at the other side. And what, what, how is that in any way productive? Like what, what, what good actually gets done when two sides just yell at each other all the time? Whatever. Uh, Ray Langwa, good morning. Let's get this one today. Yes, sir. Uh, Luke Landry, of course, my comment was referring to the 11th, especially after the shaking 10th. Easier to say that now than in the moment. Um, Jordan said, uh, I know it's baseball and March Madness. Do you think our defense is going to look better than last season this fall? As the season takes older, I'm going to see, I'm going to see an offense that will put up points and watch a horrible defense let points get on the board. Um, well, Jordan, I think it would be hard to be worse. So it's fine that you ask about football. I mean, morning school, you can ask whatever you want here at morning school. It's just a free flowing convo. Um, I um, that's just been my contention is it's going to be hard to be worse. Um, I I don't know how much better they'll be, but I guess my hope. But similarly, I don't. The offense isn't going to be as good as it was last year. Like they were literally the number one offense in the country. I don't think they're going to be the number one offense in the country again. I don't think you lose the Heisman Trophy winner and two first-round picks and you're the best offense in college football. So that's not going to happen. But I think the offense will still be really good. But it's so if, like if the offense was here and the defense was here, if the offense comes down and the defense can – if the offense only is, say, 10% less, but the defense is 50% better, well, how much does that gap, how many more wins does closing that gap uh, get you next year? Um, Kyle Gallo, football is inches, baseball is centimeters. If that third strike was a centimeter back, Malazzo handles it possibly. Those are runner out at first. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you got to be able to spike a breaking ball and trust your catcher is going to block it up. And I mean, Malazzo did. It just it kicked right, and he went left. And he couldn't find it. So it's a bummer, man. I mean, that's that's bad fortune. Like, you got outplayed at Mississippi State. And tip your cap to Florida because Neely and Slater handcuffed you in the in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh, and Caglione hit hit the moonshot. So, um, you, I mean, you let the guy beat you that you couldn't, the guy you couldn't let beat you, you know. Uh, Luke Landry could have gone with Kate Anderson or Justin Lore, but I have more faith in Ack out of the three. Uh, regardless of that, the offense can't shut down the way it did. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, they didn't shut down. They had 11 hits in the game, man. You know, um, anyway, Tiger Diver, any uh, updates on a return of scone and tea and whiskey and wine in Vegas? Nope. No updates. Uh, and we're planning to do whiskey and wine in Vegas, just a matter of where we're going to do it. Patrick Berglas, good morning. Go Tigers. Mulkey won't take no mess from Hacks, and we love it. 
Stacey Gilmore, I know you don't talk NCAA wrestling, but Penn State broke some records last night during the championships. Very cool. Good for them. Brett DeGroe, I know it's a different style. We need less Pat Forty in the media and more Clay Travis's. I could not disagree with you more. Um, Brett, like Pat Forty is no or Clay Travis is no better than Pat Forty. I could not disagree with you more. That's your you are that's exactly the point I'm making is that all you're seeking is affirmation, not information. Clay Travis is on the completely opposite side of that conversation. And I don't care what fringe you exist on. If you're on the far fringe of either side, I think you're stupid. Like I don't have any desire to hear from you. And anyone that wants to follow those people, all you're doing is seeking affir you're seeking affirmation. You're seeking people that are going to tell you what you want to hear instead of even considering what a middle ground might look like. So no, I I think Clay Travis is another one that's that's atrocious. He's he's the same as Pat Forty. I used to love reading Clay Travis. Clay used to write for I don't know if it was like SI.com or NBC Sports years ago. Clay Travis wrote one of the funniest articles I've ever seen in my life. I've ever read. It was. It was an. It was a. He eulogized the old Jefferson Pilot Sports when. Uh, when JP. You know, the 11 a.m. JP Sports went away. He he eulogized it in a way that people who are old enough to remember those broadcasts how awful they were. And it was hilarious. I literally copied. I, I highlighted and copied it. Posted that article in a Word document and put it. Uh, password protected so I, I would never lose it in case if it somewhere got lost in the annals of the internet over time it was that great and but he's gone the complete other way and i don't blame him i mean he's become more of a political commentator and that's been very lucrative for him so he's gone and made a great living but i don't respect the work he does i think he's he's no better than any of them but he's getting paid so go make your money i'm not I'm mad at him for making his money i just don't respect the work he does um, <laughs> make defense great again. Matt, if you cross paths with Forty, Forty, can you punch him in the face with his thanks in advance? Um, I came really close last summer at SEC Media Days. I don't know if I've told you all this story. I don't think I need to. I don't want one to elaborate. Um, but um. Yeah, in Nashville this past summer, we were at a place with some common friends, and I tried to be cordial and actually stuck out my hand to shake his hand, and he just just stared at me in the face and uh, didn't say anything. He's lucky. Well, that's it. Anyway, told me all I need to know about Pat Forty. It confirmed everything I thought I knew about Pat Forty. Um, Austin Kidder, good morning. Sat next to a kid on a ski lift who asked me what I thought of the Saints. He let me go on an entire scone-like rant about mediocrity before saying he's Derek Carr's nephew. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's so good. What? What? <laughs> How old, Austin? How old? I hope you're still there. That was 20 minutes or uh, 15 minutes ago you wrote that. How long? Oh, my God. I got to know more. I got to know more about that. Von Bluesman, thoughts on Mike Tyson, Jake Paul. Um, I think it's absurd that Jake Paul's fighting someone that's 30 years older than him. Uh, I think Mike Tyson looks great in some of the training videos. Uh, you wonder about a man that's almost 60. How much of a chin does he have and what's what will his cardio be like? Um, I think Tyson's best shot is going to be if he can land just a giant uppercut and just sleep Jake Paul, which is hard to do. With 16 ounce gloves, but um, you know, if Mike Tyson could pack some some pop in one of those punches and uh, and catch Jake Paul, I think that's really a shot. But we'll see. Uh, John Fisher, congratulations on your award. Let's all cheer the Lady Tigers today on the way to a victory. I appreciate how Kim backs our university community and our young ladies. All right, John, and thank you for the uh, for the congratulations. Yeah, we had a great day on a Friday. We had the uh, Louisiana Association of Broadcasters annual Prestige Awards. So. Our guarantee family of stations took home nine awards this year, and um, uh, 104.5 ESPN accounted for five of them. That was uh, that's the most ever. So it's a great day. T. Bob won uh, Young Professional of the Year. AFR won Best Sports Show. Uh, 
Whiskey and Wine won Best Use of Digital Media. Paul O'Neill won Best Producer first ever in that category. It was the first time they introduced the Best Producer category, and Paul won it. Um, and then um, uh, the, match, the Matchler won for a Best Radio Promotion of the Year. So the silly thing where we sent Muse on a blind date to an Aqua concert won an award. <laughs> That's so good. Um, all right. Uh, L.A. Chris. What's up, Unc? I've uh, been hearing pretty good things about Ricky in practice. Hope he's QB2. Uh, be interesting, man. You know, to see how if Ricky Collins takes advantage of being around for more of a year. You know, my thought with that is you you brought in uh, AJ Swan, clearly not to be your starter, but as a guy who has SEC starting experience to be your backup if something went wrong with Nuss. So, um, I'd love it though. I mean, if if Ricky Collins, if the guy you recruited, emerges and has a great year, that'd be awesome. Uh, H Town Tiga. Morning from Houston. Love weekend scone. Women's sports had their magic bird moment last year. It's building each year. Let's not be naive to think it's close to the men's tourney. That's very true. Craig Dugat with print media all but dead. Do you think it's a mad dash for some of these guys to generate clicks to survive? Headlines for articles rarely reflect contents in articles. Something that's it's a good question, Craig. So a couple things. Number one, um, there will always be uh, print media. Um, in the sense that there, there are always going to be people who would pref prefer to read than to watch or listen. That's just humans. Like some people are going to prefer to read, some are going to prefer to watch, some are going to prefer to listen. That's just nature. Do you want to watch YouTube videos? Do you want to listen to a podcast? Do you want to read an article or a blog online? That's the difference. Like people aren't going to get a physical paper delivered to their their door anymore. Um, it's just that everybody gets their their written news here, right? Um. And the the challenge, Craig, that so many in the print media have had is they've struggled to monetize. Um, and so the path many have gone is a paywall. And the problem with a paywall is if you're a large organization, um, if you're a large organization and... Um, You have uh, scale and and overhead. If you go to a subscription model, the amount of subscribers that you would need uh, to not only function but to be profitable is largely more than any can uh, can draw. If you are a major national brand like ESPN, right, you can have your ESPN Plus. Uh, sponsorship, which I I do subscribe to ESPN Plus. Um, mostly, I, mostly I wanted it because I wanted to be able to watch UFC, so I can watch all their all the fights on UFC uh, on, on ESPN Plus, um, and they get you access to a lot of the written content and stuff like that as well. Um, but they have a freemium model, right? Where you, a lot of the content's free, then they have premium content that you pay for, whatever. The straight paywall model is really a challenge because you're probably cutting off 95% of your of your audience because 95% of the people are never going to subscribe. Are the 5% enough volume to cover your overhead and keep you operational? That's where the Washington Post missed. The Washington Post went to a model like that, and they had 240 layoffs last year because they they couldn't sustain their their model. Um, so they cut people. And so when you cut people, naturally, you're cutting the amount and quality of your product, period. I mean, it's just like you don't have enough people to provide the amount of content. Now, you can look on a more micro level where you have smaller businesses that don't have as much overhead, that don't need as many subscribers. And if they can get their core, you know, a, a thousand people to pay them, you know, 10 bucks a month. Well, that's $10,000. Well, if you're a, a one or two person operation, like that's pretty good, you know? Um, and then you can also generate revenue through ad, ad sales on top of your, your subscription model or whatever, but in it, but you could do it. But the problem is for those, like for, I'll give you an example for 104.5 ESPN. We've had consultants try to convince us to go to a, a paywall for our content. And, and I, I have adamantly, 
fought against that. It's like, I, as long as I'm, I have any say so, like we will never put our content behind a paywall ever because we, even as, as much as we've done as well as we've done, we don't have enough scalability to where we're going to be able to operate the way we, we, we do behind a paywall. So, and I don't want to, I don't want to siphon off our offense and our, our audience and run them away because we're putting all our content behind a paywall. So, I, this is a long answer, Craig, but I just I know a lot about this this space. So to your point about, so his point was, you know, is it basically just generating clicks? A, a lot of that is, but even still, you know, the clicks are based on on a CPM, right? So you sell ads on a CPM, which is a cost per thousand. So per one thousand impressions or clicks or visitors or downloads, what is the cost per thousand? Um, and so. For a lot of them, yes, it's it's clickbait to try to get those clicks. But specifically with the Washington Post, their content's behind a paywall anyway. So, it, like, what, what you know, they're 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 missing the mark there. Um, um anyway, uh. Craig Duga, um, sorry, that was the one. Uh, anyway, I hope all that made sense. That's a lot. Uh, Gulf South, poke the ball. It's called a bunt <laughs> Um, By the way, Gulf South, I have always, for the one bajillionth time, so he's talking about the play in the fl- it, with uh, beating the shift. We're talking about that a bit ago. I have always said this. I want to be consistent. I am okay bunting for a hit or to score a run. I will trade an out for a run. Same with a sack fly. I will bunt for a hit to get on base. My point is and has always been there is no mathematical percentage where your odds of scoring a run increases by giving up an out to advance a runner. None. There's no situation. You can have a runner on second with nobody out. If you bunt to get them to third, your mathematical probability of scoring a run does not increase with that runner at third as opposed to at, with one out as opposed to at second base with no outs. It's a fact. It's, this is mathematical probability. So, no, bunting, a sacrifice bunt is never okay. You want to bunt to score a run or bunt for a hit? hundred. I'm always good with that. I've always said that. Um, Let's see. Let's not play banana ball. Fan catches fall ball. It's an, oh, let's not. Michael Thacker, feel bad for Malazzo if he's able to find the ball. Three outs in the game, one next inning likely. Uh. Let's see. Spurge, good morning. Uh, Adam Zander, what's the deal with Cade Woods? Is he hurt? Uh, I don't know what the deal is with Cade Woods. I'll check on that, though. I was, I was excited about Cade Woods when they got him as well. I mean, he was a big-time arm from North Louisiana, transferred in from uh, from Bama. Uh, Craig, social media as a whole has ruined the whole civil discussion. We're in the I am, oh, I'm always right era. Um. You know, Craig, I'm I'm a little torn on that, man. Um, it's like when people say, oh, it's so sad when you walk into a, a room, like a doctor's office, and everyone's on their cell phone. Like, people don't interact anymore. Like, if I rewind the clock 30 years, and I walk into a doctor's office, a waiting room, what's everybody doing? What's everybody doing? If you're old enough to remember this, what's everybody doing? Magazines, right? I mean, everyone's in a magazine. It's no so different. Our behavior hasn't changed. It's just the vehicle's changed. Like, we're all on our phones now. Instead of having 15 magazine subscriptions on the table in the doctor's office and you grab the SI or the people or whatever, you just, you're on your phone. It's so different. Um... See, that's another thing. Like, go to United, we stand divided, we fall. Media loves to keep us divided. Media doesn't love to keep you divided. Media is giving you the thing you want. That's the point. Like, the problem is the, the media's job is to report news in a very literal sense. But we've blended this era of, 
I mean, this is the what they called. I mean, I've been out of school, J school for 20 years, but at that time they were calling it infotainment. You had to inform, but you also had to entertain. And that's blurred the lines of what is what is news and what is opinion. And I think it's confused a lot of the a lot of the populace. I think people are confused by by what is what is real, what is news, what is valid, what isn't. But I don't think the media loves keeping you divided. If if you the if you the the American citizen didn't like that stuff, you wouldn't watch. But you all watch. <laughs> Cortland Weiner at the Dallas, you let that pitcher go so fast. So um Ryan Slater, the pitcher from Florida, is sort of notorious for like he does not wait. Like he gets on on the mound and he just goes and throw, he gets the ball. Like, but the, the crazy thing, Cortland, like this is the thing that drove me nuts. If you notice, like all the pitchers have a wristband, right? Like a watch that shows them what pitch. Slater never looked at it ever. All he did was throw his breaking ball. 100 percent of his pitches. It was just he never, ever, ever looked at a sign. I watched him. He never looked at a sign for the catcher or looked at his watch. He got the ball, and he was just snapping breaking balls. Everything was a breaking ball. And, like, if you're LSU, you had to know that was coming. But the other thing, too, is with the clock, the batter has to get in the box. Like, the batter has to be in the box within 10 seconds. So, I mean, I guess you could slow it down a smidge, but, again, I mean, you got to be on, in the box and ready to roll. Uh, Jason H., what's going on? Uh, make defense great again, said, did you get an update on Greg Brooks? I did make a call yesterday, um, and I am trying to connect with Greg Brooks' father to to get an update. Brian Kelly, when he met with reporters, was asked about Greg Brooks, and I don't think he gave a um, – he, he didn't give a very detailed answer. It was more than just, you know, he's, he's going through a lot of rehab and stuff like that, um, and I'm not so sure that that's the whole story. So um, – based on one very, very, very short conversation I had yesterday, but I don't know enough to be able to be comfortable to say right now, but I did make, I did make contact yesterday and I'm trying to connect with Greg Brooks's father to get more info. Um, go Tigers. I uh, thought the South Carolina coach was classy. The way she handled the whole situation out of the game, Mulkey brought fire on herself, but that's why I love her. Um, I love Kim too. I have no problem with what Kim said. Uh, Jason H., what's going on? Jason Horn, top of the morning. Y'all smash the like button if you would. Um, subscribe up to the channel if you're on YouTube. Um, yeah. Kyle Gallo, long season. Last year they lost the series to Mississippi State. Almost lost the opening series to a and Peeps got to have faith in JJ. Look, last year they wrapped up the regular season with series losses to Auburn and Mississippi State, and then went 1-2 and two in the SEC tournament, including losing the game Paul Skeen started against Arkansas. Um, and they won the national championship. So, a B. Lorkey, information greater than affirmation Matt is preaching this morning. It's true. I know a lot about the space. I got the foie. Um, in the moment, I didn't like bringing back Act for the 11th. Super stressful 10th. He got out of, had an emotional adrenaline dump walking off the field. Hard to keep things going after that. Um, I, I could see that. I, I wonder, um, and I don't remember exactly <clears throat> who was up in the 11th, but um, you had, I, for Florida, you had Helmers and Uyoa ready to go. Um, I think Uyoa has been really good in spots this year. Um, But man, Axe been there a bunch for you. And let me see. And look, and he, struck, he struck out Colby Shelton to start the inning, start the 11th. And then they shifted. And that's when Evan singled right against the shift. I mean, if you don't shift, it's a ground ball out. You know what I mean? Well, then Caglione's up, but then Caglione's up with two out, nobody on. You can walk him. And then he struck out Shellnut. Hmm. Hindsight's 2020, man. But again, like he struck out he struck out Shelton and then got Evans to single. 
or, or got Evans to ground ground the ball to second base. There was just nobody there. So anyway. Mark Allen, why can't we live in a world where news is news and sports is sports? Um, I mean, I try to do that, Mark. Uh, I never talk about news on my show, ever. Or social issues, and, unless if it's as they pertain to sport. For example, like I never talked about Kaepernick, ever, on AFR, except for to say, what did that mean for the quarterback spot in San Francisco if the Saints were playing the Niners or something like that, right? Um, because what I, what I believe in firmly is like, you don't bait and switch your audience. You don't lure, you don't lure your audience into AFR on the pretenses that this is a sports show and then talk politics. Like if you want politics, there's places you can get that conversation. If you want sports, you come listen to me. So it, it's the same, it, like I've always said, it's like whenever I, I buy a ticket to a concert, I don't want the artist on stage telling me all of his social and political views, his or her. I don't care. I like. I didn't buy a ticket to come listen to you, whether I agree with you or not. So I, again, I don't care if it's a like who, who is the country singer that got and all that. Who, who I don't care. I, either way, I, I don't care. Like I bought a ticket to come hear you play music. That that that's why I bought bought a ticket. You as an American citizen have a right to your opinion about anything. And that's fine, and you can express it just not on stage at a concert where people bought tickets to listen to you play music. Like, that's the big difference. Like, that's the thing about, about sports. Like, I don't care if athletes have an opinion and share their opinion. Just, like, share your opinion on your own time and your own social media and your own your own platform, not the platform you've been given by, by a league that exists to watch people play football, baseball, basketball, whatever, right? Um, Jeremy WC, good morning. Uh, H Town Tiger, as a frustrated Saints fan, should the Saints do a fire sale and start over? Do you trust the current Saints front office to reset? Um, so should they? Yes. I mean, I believe that they should have done that last year and then again this year, but they're not going to. In in restructuring Derek Carr's contract, that effectively means you've got Derek Carr for two more years, this year and next minimum. So, I mean, well, we're stuck. We're stuck for at least two more years. You're going to be stuck. It sucks to know it, but it's true. Like, you're just the, – the only way out, like the only way out is a – Bledsoe Brady situation or a um uh uh Brock Purdy or Russell Wilson where you have a, a quarterback like if Jake Hain let's let's say hypothetically I don't want this to happen I just want to say hypothetically let's say hypothetically Derek Carr something happens turns an ankle bum shoulder whatever and Jake Hainer goes in and just sets it on fire. And then all of a sudden, it's like a Brady Bledsoe thing. Brady was a six-round draft pick. Drew Bledsoe got hurt. That's why Brady went in. The same with Brock Purdy. And then all of a sudden, you realize you've got, I mean, R Russell Wilson was a third-round pick. And all of a sudden, you got this guy that's a stud. And now you've got a, a rookie quarterback on a, on a bargain basement deal. Then you've given yourself the opportunity to reset. But... I mean, how do you count on that to happen? You know, that's not a practical way to go about building a franchise. Austin Kidder, good morning. Let's see. All right. Oh, we were at a local ski resort here in Vegas. The kid was 17. He agreed with me. Carr is a good, not great quarterback. Wanted to win. Uh, who's going to turn out $150 million? Let's see. Um, make defense great again. Your encounter with 40 is interesting. Does he have something personal against you? Or the school you cover and love. What's the reason he had disrespect for you? Um, my only guess on that is, and Pat and I personally have never had cross words. And I never bite my tongue. I mean, I'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, we, so the longest interaction I ever had with him was at SEC Media Days a few years back in, uh, it was in Birmingham. 
And Jimmy and I, Jimmy Ott and I, went to meet Ross Dellinger for dinner. Ross was with Pat, 40, and somebody else. I don't remember who the other one was. And we all sat together and ate dinner. And then Jimmy had his vehicle. So Jimmy and I, who had rode, and I think that the other guys had all Ubered, Jimmy drove Pat and Ross, and I can't remember who the other person was, um, back to their hotel. We actually stopped at a Walgreens because Pat wanted to get some some Pat's Blue Ribbon. So we stopped at a Walgreens. Pat jumped out, went and bought some beer, got and went, drove him back to the hotel. So And it was a very cordial evening. Um, there, <laughs> there was a moment where, because Jordy was there, and Jordy came later. And Jordy went up to Pat and said, I, you know, I owe you an apology. And Pat said, yeah, you do. Um, and it was something about they had texted and maybe like Jordy had screenshotted some texts and tweeted. I don't remember the whole, it was something like that. And I'm wondering if if Pat maybe thought I was Jordy and he mixed us up. Um, the only other thing I can think of is through all the Will Wade stuff, um, I mean, I've, I've exactly what I've said to you here today. I said on air, like I used to love Pat Forty's writing. I don't, I don't respect him, his work anymore, um, because of all that stuff. And maybe that got back to him, but I'll tell him that to his face. I have no problem saying that. Um, that's all I want to say. Let's see. Uh, Golf South. I thought the same show couldn't win LAB's best radio show back to back years. No, I won best sports show. I think this was, I think this is my seventh time winning it. Um. So no, you can win it. I mean, Murphy, Sam, and Jody won best morning show, flipping every year. Uh, H-Town Tiger, let's see, Whiskey and Wine's best digital content guarantee creates and puts out. It's a proof of concept that became an instant hit. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, Patrick Wright, were they chanting Paul O'Neill's name at the award ceremony? <laughs> they went up, Patrick Wright. <laughs> That's so good. Um, uh, Paul. So, Patrick, you do have to create... Um, you do have to create... Um, well, I'm behind on comments, y'all. I'm so sorry. I'm like 20 minutes behind. Um, you have to create like a little sizzle reel that runs that they play in the ceremony in the event that you win, right? So if you if you submit a nomination for a category, you also have to submit like a fifteen second sizzle reel that they'll play on the screens at when when you win. Um, so and you don't know if you won or not, but you have to submit this in the event that you do. So for Paul's, yes, uh, there actually was the. The intro, like they're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. That, that was in in Paul's. Um, and the funniest thing was the sizzle reel for whiskey and wine. Um, hang on one second. I think you'll enjoy this. And again, I should have. I need to learn how to pull, how to like save videos and stuff on this, so I can just put them up on the screen so y'all can see them. But real, just real quick. Um, like this was part of the nomination for uh, whiskey and wine. Let me show you. Yeah, I think y'all will think this is funny. Maybe not, but um, here it is. Okay, wait. Wait, hang on. So I'll put it on the microphone again. I wish I'd plug this in so y'all could hear it. Um, actually, you know, what? oh, I could Bluetooth it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, let me. Let me let me try this. Let me just try this, um, real quick. I'll, let me try this, please. Just give me one second. We'll work on this together. All right, where's my? Let's see. Connect. Okay. Cool. All right. Bluetooth is here. Okay. I hope y'all are able to hear this. All right. Um,
Okay, I hope y'all are able to hear this. Everybody watches Whiskey and Wine. And I have no idea. I'm tell you what, man. It's the best guy post-game show on the internet. You like drinking. You like smoking. You like taking. You like live reacting. You love Whiskey and Wine. Go, PJ. That's my PJ. Yeah. Boys, All right, it is. Um, Who? Could y'all hear that? I don't have my my headphone in, so I don't know if y'all could hear that. Um, let me know just very quickly if y'all can hear that. Um, could y'all could y'all hear that? Just give me like a thumbs up or something like that. Um, okay, good, perfect. So anyway, so you could hear like the beeps and all. Well, part of the sizzle reel was like was clipping some of that, right? And so Polly uh, Johnson, who's the the head of the, the LAB, uh, when Whiskey and Wine won, they played the sizzle reel on the screen, but they turned the volume off completely. And she told me after, she said, she said uh, the governor was supposed to be there. He ended up having to cancel late, but the governor was supposed to be there, and she didn't want that. Because they did a run through. Apparently, they the LAB does a run through the morning before of the entire thing, um, and uh, she did she didn't want that playing on the loudspeaker <laughs> and playing the whole conference. So every, so there was no audio, but everybody could see T Bob just jump up and grab the mic. And yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's so good. Oh god. Christians had posted on your social media. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's good. Uh, anyway. Uh, that's funny. I mean, that's like a there's a there, a lot of I think a lot of you really would appreciate if you're especially if you're a whiskey and wine watcher, you'll appreciate the nomination video. Oh man. It was so good. Um Volume. <laughs> My whole house heard that. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Uh, how about it, Eugene Sutherland? Greetings from South Philly. All right, uh, that was gut blow. You know what's great baseball? Another shot at it today. Yep, got to go get it done. Uh, Carl the Cat, young professional of the year. What the payoff is real? Nah, T Bob, very very deserving man. Um. So young professional of the year is for someone um 35 or or younger. So this was T Bob's last year to be to be um eligible for that category. Uh and he's very, very deserving, man. He's um he's come a long way from uh you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, in in uh, in this industry, you you know, very seldom do you ever just start at the top. Um, you know, T-Bob, when he finished playing, first came to guarantee, was doing sales, and then was doing off the bench two nights a week with Jordy, the show that Jordy and Derek had started. Um, and then when, uh, then he, then he left guarantee and went to Entercom in New Orleans and was on three WL, WWWL in New Orleans, um, and then went to WWL from like eight to midnight, which that ain't easy, man. You're starting like a young family and you're on the radio from eight to midnight. Like that's challenging. Um, and then guarantee hired him back when Jordy left. And no, I'm sorry. Uh, when Derek, when Derek got hired by Ogeron, we hired T-Bob back, put him in the morning with Jordy. And then obviously he's stayed in that role with Jordy. And then with um, uh, now with Hester. So he's he's done great, man. Look, I mean, he's got his his show on volume, uh, snaps. He's got a show on uh, on the stadium network with um, with AJ McCarron. So I mean, T Bob's done great, man. He's uh, for for all of his quirks and and all the the idiosyncrasies. Um, uh, he's he's one of a kind, man. He's very very worthy. DJ Trauma Gaming, Matt, did you interview Beloso's dad? We've not done it. We should have done it this week because of Florida, too. You're right. Gosh, dog, we got to get that done. 
Stacey Gilmore, thoughts on the Washington Commanders? Jaden going two to them. I think it'd be great for Jaden. Um, I, and I actually really like, especially with Dan Quinn being there, you've got a defensive-minded head coach, which I love because the I think the worst thing that could happen to any rookie quarterback is go to a place that is an, that's awful defensively and you're asked to, to do everything offensively. Um, and all, not only that, but also because Dan Quinn is a new head coach there, you're going to have some stability. Like, think about Caleb Williams going to Chicago. Caleb Williams goes to Chicago, and Matt Eberflus gets fired after one year. Well, Caleb Williams has one year with Eberflus. Let's say they fire Eberflus. Then year two, he's starting over again. So I think stability will be really good for Jaden. As weird as it is to say, I think the situation in Washington would be better than Chicago. Uh, Golf South. Yeah, Dak taking over for Romo. Yep. Uh, LSU fan. Definitely choked away the game last night. Hope we win today. Uh, Lisa Drago, good morning, or Drago. Kyle Gallo, however the season turns out, they'll have been blessed to witness Travinsky's stash. Uh, let's see. Um, Austin, one reason I love the show, it's a break from politics and current events. No doubt, man. So it will always be. Luke Landry, haven't been able to tune in lately. You probably express your views on this. Thoughts on the Chase Young signing? Hey, Luke, let me let me do this, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna link to you the um I, I did talked about it on AFR. Let me link to you um the go um I have I'm gonna link to you the AFR Saints channel and there's three different videos I did. The first one when he signed. Then when we learned about the neck injury, and then when we learned about the contract, right? So, um, um, check them out if you have chance, have a chance, and that'll give you sort of a full explanation. Um, <laughs> remember when going to the bathroom involved reading ingredients of shampoo, such a simple time. <laughs> oh man. All right, y'all. Um, let's see if we can get a couple more. If you're on YouTube, please smash that like button. As always, uh, and I'll subscribe to the channel. Facebook, like the Matt Moscona page. Brought to you by Brock. You need an orthopedist. They're the best. Remember, the After Hours Clinic open uh, nights and weekends. So uh, if you find yourself in need of an orthopedist, the Brock After Hours Clinic right there on uh, on Blue Bonnet near Perkins. Ten different Brock locations across the greater Baton Rouge area. Check them out. Um Von Bluesman, I love T-Bob and his passion for LSU. Y'all are a great team. Uh, it's definitely one of those things where opposites attract. I, I kind of, I always tell people that me and T-Bob, kind of the vibe is kind of the Chris Farley, David Spade, Tommy Boy vibe. That's kind of what we go for. Um, oops, sorry, I missed it. I did that one. Um, Daniel Blunt, Matt, does Hudko do flat roof TPO and WBR? Absolutely. Um. Daniel, shoot me um shoot me um a either a DM or no, you would know text me. Text me on my text line, Daniel. Uh three two two five three nine six forty four hundred. Two two five three nine six four four zero zero. Um text me your info there and I'll uh and I'll I'll pass it along. Make defense great again. Look at Scone gushing about T. It's a beautiful thing. The the funny thing is, T Bob and I get along great. Um, and we always have. You know, the the bit we play on air has worked. Um, but I think you know we have a lot of like love and mutual respect, and we we both know how to play a bit, right? Um, but definitely as Definitely not like in a in a manager role. Um, sometimes it's harder to 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 carry on the the bit. It's a weird dance. It's a delicate dance because like I still have to hold him accountable for things, and he'll tell you there's times when I like where well, I mean, yeah, you got to hold him accountable for things. Um, but yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Golf South said, isn't OTB on some top 10 national radio show list? So, so Barrett Sports Media, the thing that I went to and spoke at last, last week in New York or two weeks ago in New York. So Jason Barrett uh, puts out his list of like um, – the top, you know, he does an annual list, and uh, and he's put OTB on the list for uh, morning shows. Like, there's large market, and there's like mid market, uh, and he's put them on their their list of the best morning shows in uh, in mid market. Uh, let's see, did, 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 did. Leon Williams, morning, Matt. Headed to watch my son's nine U baseball team play in a one day tournament. All right, Leon, enjoy that day. Uh, Brett, whiskey and wine allows me to enjoy the wins and get over the losses. We love it, man. Cortland, can you imagine if Whiskey and Wine was in this format during 2019? Yeah, Jordy and I were doing Whiskey and Wine in 2019. That was still pretty lit, but we weren't at Don Juan, and yeah, it was it was different. Um, um <laughs> Whiskey and Wine is the best free therapy session ever created for Tiger fans. Uh, let's see. Um, Mark, yes, said, did something happen to Jake Brown last night? Yeah, so um, when he grounded out, um, he can't. You could tell he came up limp. Uh, about halfway down the line, he started. He he pulled up because he probably would have beaten it out uh, had he been full throttle. Um, and so that's why Kling went into center. So they didn't say what it was. I mean, you could surmise something. You know, some leg injury, hamstring, quad, calf, I don't know. But um, but he, he he pulled up for sure. Oh, Carl, I know. I know, I know. Um, there's Anthony. Good morning. Just a really bad loss. Nothing else to add. Disappointed. Hopefully get better over the course of the conference. I mean, last night, um, uh, last night was disappointing. Uh, there's no other way around it. Um, you know, against Mississippi State, you got outplayed. Uh, last night, you blew it. I, I mean, that's you led by two in the single runs in the eighth and the ninth. And the unfortunate part is, you know, the run you allowed in the eighth. You know, Ackenhausen gets the strikeout, you know, spikes a breaking ball, Malazzo blocks it up, but it's just bad, bad baseball luck. You get a strikeout, and the ball kicks kicks away from him, and the run scores from third. You know, and then in the ninth, you walk the leadoff guy, but Ackenhausen looked like he had the strikeout on a two-two pitch. They ruled it a ball, and then he walks him on the next pitch, and that's that ended up being the tie and run. So, and then look, I mean, in the eleventh, you shifted their guy, beat the shift, and then Caglione homered. I mean, tip your cap there, but um, um. Not closing that thing in the eighth and the ninth was very, very disappointed. Very disappointing. Now, what I'll be interested to see is, look, sometimes, oh, sometimes over the course of a season, you'll see those things even out. So, like, one got away last night, no doubt. Um, but over the course of thir of a thirty game SEC schedule, those tend to even out. Like, you're somewhere along the way, you're going to get one that you probably don't deserve to get. So, um, like last year, if I remember, last year, I think I think one of the games against Mississippi State was like that. Like, you had a giant lead, and then you gagged it away late. I'm trying to remember. They, a lot of them run together, forgive me. But I think maybe there was one against Ole Miss that you just – just highway robbery, just thievery, just stole it. Or maybe it was maybe it was A and M. Let's see, you beat A and M nine nothing, twelve seven. Then you lost six to eight. Or was that the one that you had won, and it got away? <clears throat> yeah, that was it. That was it. You're leading. You're leading. You put up a four spot in the first. You won the first. This was A and M last year, the Sunday game. You put four spot in the first four or five. You're up six. You're up six to four. Bottom eight. 
You're up six to four, bottom eight. They put up a four spot in the bottom of the eighth. Like they were, they were like DOA. I mean, you're cruising. And then, yeah, Shores and Little gave it up. That was it. And then I think, and then there was one, I think, on the flip side that you stole like that. Like, I don't know, I'm trying to remember, but, um, The Auburn games. I don't. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Point being, like those tend to even out over the course of a season. So, one got away from you last night. Remember that because at some point you're probably going to steal one in conference play. So we'll see. Um. Someone asked again, did we interview Beloso's dad? Have not done that. Um, uh, but um, someone someone asked that a bit ago. Sorry, I'd, I'd already answered that question today. And we should have done that this week with the Florida game, but we've not. We've tried. And Hot Rod's been been um, been available. It's, but I wanted to get me, Cade, and Hot Rod all together to crack that bottle. But it's been tougher to get Cade locked down. We'll get it done. All right, a couple more. Gulf South is the guy who said you sounded too nasally in the morning or whatever his issue. Been back since your new setup. I'm really curious if you have his approval yet. I bet your backpack's done. Let me see this thing. Oh, you're soaking wet, boy. Oh, my God. Soaking wet. You are soaking wet. we got to go change you. Oh, Lord. Well, Daddy's going to go to church. And where are we going to go after Daddy goes to church? To the mall. Okay. Oh Lord, y'all, I gotta go. He's he's wet on both sides. I'm so sorry. I gotta go. Have a great Sunday. See ya. <laughs>